A very good evening to you and welcome to the start of Eurosport's extensive coverage of the 19 African Nations Cup. The game tonight between Nigeria and Gabon. Nigeria, of course, with a very colourful support and one of the giants of uh, African football. But nevertheless, they last won the title 14 years ago. After winning, winning the African on the home soil in Nigeria in 1980, you understand? And um, actually, it was Nigeria and Nigeria in the finals, and uh, we defeated Algeria. So I think 10 years later, we had a replay in the finals again. That's, yes, in Algiers. So it was now Algeria and Nigeria again in Algeria, so which they defeated Nigeria. Just like you said, we have been having issue with Cameroon because of uh, the uh, CAF president. In 84, we lost to Cameroon in the finals. In uh, 88, we also lost to Cameroon in the finals again. You understand? <laughs> so in, the in 1990, where we came second behind Algeria, and in Senegal 92, we came third. Uh, it was actually Nigeria Cameroon again in the third place match. So oh, we won. One, one go to New. You know, and uh, in 1994, we won the second uh, Nations Cup in uh, Tunisia. In 1990, like he said, you know, Algeria has been one of our rivals. <laughs> you know, my Algeria. 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 Yeah, Algeria. 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 Yes. Oh, yeah, I remember they denied us uh, the World Cup ticket in uh, 1990. 1990. 1990. Italy. Italy. Yeah. Yes. Right there. Yes, right yes, there. Yes, yes. You know. So in that Nations Cup 1990. It was Nigeria or Algeria in the opening game. Exactly. And they were locked us. I think it was 5 yeah, 1. Yeah, 5 Yeah. 5 1, yes. Five, yes. So, but I, we recovered. And that was when, <laughs> when the Super Eagles so, Yes, tried. exactly. Yes. No, From no, that no. first game, you know, disastrous out in Nigeria recovered and it went all through all the way to the finals. Final. So, in the final, they thought it was going to be another reason, but the Eagles matched them toe to toe and you know, they were just locked. If you take that, the officiating too. Like I said, at that time, because it was, they were playing in front of their homes. Yeah, exactly. The officiating too was against Nigeria. It's Nigeria. Africa. Well, Nigeria came through a very tough section. They beat uh, Uganda 2 0, lost to Ethiopia, thrashed Sudan in a return game after a no scoring draw. They won 4 0. Drew with Uganda and in the last uh, of the games beat Ethiopia 6 0. Kick. Push forward there by Keshi. Nice little ball inside there. And there is appeal for a penalty kick, but the referee just weighs play on. Played forward here by George Finidi. Goes George Finidi from Ajax, 22 years of age. A very colourful audience for this match, of course. Free kick. And the matter went down there, Siasia. Uh, who's going to come into the box for this one? Headed away there by Ambome. Not back towards and put away by Obami. A really good penetration this time. Oh, into the side net. That was Yakini. And on. Plays it forward to Manon. There's a good opportunity now for Endong Zindi. More like it. A little more animated there, the game. A good run forward here. Swept away from Regis Manon. First 15 minutes gone, and that is the division of possession which is not too surprising a statistic from what we've seen with our own eyes we're taken by Valerie Ondo the bad one too just away by Oliha now up front Yakini lumbering sort of player but when he gets trapping he's dangerous Yakini going through wonderful skill He's got to put it away, the opening goal by the top scorer from last tournament. The man who scored four goals two years ago in the tournament has now opened the scoring. Arnek is just about 16 minutes gone. 
Wonderful spot from midfield. No flag for offside, though. Some of the Gabon players were complaining. Delightfully cool over the goalkeeper. And finishing with the neatest of headers. Nigeria go one up. Top scorer of the last series with the only goal scorer of this half. 1984. Look at the gap of almost 17 years. So at uh, 1980, people believe that we went to sleep. Unlike that time, there was there was a preparation four years ahead of that uh, tournament. Of 1980? Of 1980. Yes, there was a preparation four years ahead of that, which eventually assisted those teams to win the, oh. the, the, the tournament. After the dispensation of uh, uh, civil rule, where Shagari was overthrown, okay. even when we won that election, we won that uh, World Cup in 1984, 1980 rather, the, the, the government fulfilled their promises to the footballer, they were giving housing, they were honor giving national honor, they are giving them cars. It was like first of its kind. Who was the government in charge of giving out those? It was Shagari. Shagari. Yes. Okay. Unlike uh, when they won the Nation World Cup in 1994, okay. Abasha promised them a lot of team cars, uh, properties, which was not fulfilled until this present government, 27 years after. Military coup in 1985. Yes, 1985. Okay, and that's I brought in Buhari, Buhari. and uh, Tunde Diagmo. But 4 to 1993 Abasha yeah, was the Minister of Defense. Minister of Defense, and, and who? And uh, Abibi was there. So Abibi already had the notion that Abasha was also nursing the hope of becoming the. Even why Abibi was not ready to do, Abasha said we withdraw his uh, men from the military. Mm -hmm. And that was his bar, his strong hold mm -hmm. of defense. Okay. The moment Abasha will, he will not be able to survive his uh, dream as uh, becoming the last president, okay. which was also an agenda of IBB. That was why when he came to power, he was not using the normal uh, head of state slogan of the military. He, he was the first military man to have an ambulation of president as a uniform man. As a, as a, what the yes, he was using the normal, as if he was a Democrat, oh. clearly elected. President. Oh. So it's before, of, it wasn't like that? It wasn't like that. It was head of state. Head of state. Yes. So then he started using the title of president. Uh, president. It was the only military one that did that. And this was in 1993 1994 period? No, you see, now you know they came into power 1985. 1985, okay. You don't understand now. Okay. And he stayed there till uh, 1993 for eight years. The presidential election was generally seen to be free, fair, and peaceful. However, there was, in fact, a huge array of electoral malpractices virtually in all the states of the Federation. He established the best political system, that is two-party system. That's IBB. IBB, but invariably he destroyed it. How? He destroyed it by annoying the election of 1993, the June 12 election. Oh, 1993? Yes. The people of this country went to polls on Saturday, June 12, 1993 and without let or hindrance, chose me as their president. Didn't they? They do. Yes. 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 November 17, 1993. After the annulment, then MK announced that he's going to step aside by putting an interim government oh. that will later uh, uh, no, uh, prepare the Nigeria for another election system. So you mean, you mean Abibi said okay, so Abibi was going to step aside? Yes. Okay. So meanwhile, Abibi was setting a guy to also to deceive us in a way. Mm. He has his own cliques. Mm. You know, they have cliques in the military. Mm. And uh, Abasha was too strong for him. He has his own alternative, who are headed by Dongo Yaru, mm. General Dongo Yaru. They're supposed to be the one that will have taken over from NS Shunyakon. But Abasha was very smart. Was, he went ahead of them and uh, took over. No, no, bloodless. Oh. I think he, he may have got a tongue lashing from Jean uh, Tissen, the ex Anderlecht and start of the ex player who coaches the side. And have a little bit more enterprise here, though. Lovely ball inside. Could this be the equalizer? Oh, that's what you call very good defending. 
And that's why Equabon, the man who made that interception, plays in Belgian football. The run is on, there's no offside, and this side, Gabon, beginning to look a bit more promising. But out about that, I think it uh, sounded like a whistle going to me, but it was from the crowd, and now they've been opened up. Man on with it. Man on. Looks inside, there's a shot. Picked up here by Amok, by Siasia. Tended to run out of ideas again. Gets it inside. Olese. Oh, beautiful little Tom there. That's a great piece of play. And you. What a delightful goal. And if you contrast that with all the huffing and puffing that's gone on by the Nigerians, and look how that goal was simplicity itself. Neat little swerve, and then angling it away. Good play there by Ndong again. And that was that little piece of action, a very good save indeed. And off the crossbar. Nice little reverse pass there by Amokachi. Well, he didn't knock the ball about like that up front earlier on in the game. They looked extremely pedestrian. I think there's a lot more to come from Yakini, Okocha, Amuniki, and Amokachi in this game up front. A uh, free kick, the ball guarded by Adepuju. Blasted it! Oh, what a goal! By Yakini! Oh! And why not end the match with a thunderbolt? His second of the game, the third for Nigeria. Brilliantly struck. Up and high. And away they go again. And they keep you a lovely ball inside. And touched too much there by the Puju flowing player all the same push forward by Olese there's a run forward good return by Olese he claims a penalty out of that oh and I think that's an act of charity by the referee concentrated around the center circle little run forward here by Amakachi and he overdoes it the FC Bruges player one of the most volatile threatening players in Belgian football as the Final whistle goes, there we are. Just about seven minutes gone, still no scoring in the African Nations quarter-final between Zaire and Nigeria. And of course all the other nations trying to shoot down Nigeria for being the only one of them to qualify for the World Cup final. Daniel Amokachi, one of the most promising players in Belgian football. And of course, the Nigerians hoping that they see the very best of him in USA 94 in the World Cup Finals. Seen very little of him today, but as I said, he has the potential, potential to score goals out of almost nothing. Close to the line, the ball swinging in, the goalkeeper does well to get a touch. Hooked away by Lukaku, the shot at goal, brilliantly saved. Bilolo. But that is precisely the point I was making about them at the start of this half. They're much more capable of doing something like that than Zaire. Who beave it away, there's no doubt. That's a beautiful ball picked up. He's got to put it. Great goal! Finidi, I beg your pardon, Yakini. Yakini it was. Beautiful ball right beyond the defender. And precisely what I was saying, that explosive action, which they have potentially in them. And Yakini, the man who was the top scorer two years ago in this tournament. Just keeps his balance, wanting to go to the outside. Run forward there, by the way, was by Oliha and Yakini. who can certainly strike three kicks and does again and just passed. Now, was there a touch? I think the goalkeeper just touched that watch, drilled in there, and he got his hands to it. Superb save. Now the touch, run forward there. Yakini, was he brought down? I think it's going to be a penalty, is it? 
The referee coming up. Strong punishing run. Oh, yes, surely. Now, a penalty kick and should be a red card. It is. And I think we're about to see Kasongo coming on. Anyway, penalty kick. And it's uh, George Finidi about to step up and take this. Does 2 0. And Nigeria surely assured of a place in the African Nations Cup semi final. Well, add to these names that uh, you've just been seeing Daniel Amakapchi of FC Bruce, George Finney of Ajax, Efren Okoko of Norwich, Austin Okocha of Eintracht, and Victor Ekpiba of Monaco, who hasn't even been used in this tournament yet. And then you can imagine what power they have. An emotional moment for the Zambians, and something of a miracle that they got to the final after that terrible tragedy. And their captain, Kalusha Bwalia, said in a quote uh, yesterday, we'll say a prayer for our dead comrades before the match, but then we'll be on our own. Well, of course, they realize just how important this game is for them. As I said, the Nigerian side so replete with talent that even Victor Ekpiba, who's a very important man in French football and in the Champions League with Monaco, hasn't been used in this tournament because he says he doesn't get on with a coach. But take all these names I've been mentioning, Yakini, Amokachi, Finidi, Okuku, Okocha, and you can see they have awesome power. New the makeup of each tribe. So the dance is... No, the defense was entirely Igbo. <laughs> the entire defense was Igbo. Yes, now, from Stephen Keshi to Kucho Kichuku, Kucho Kafo, Benny Roha, and all of them. All, all yes. Yes. All, yes. So, yeah, they have had the story of Biafra. Say that these guys are fighters. And of course, you knew that Igbo's love money. So he will go to all these players, one after the other, promise them. That's how he will do He told me, when we call, you didn't have any, any important match, he will call each player and spoke, make him promise. Do this for me, do this for me, and I will give you, and he will do it. He makes you a promise, you will go there. And, so when, trust an man, when you show him money, <laughs> that is my money. So when you know, those guys will charge and they are ready to die on the pitch. Make sure they do. You understand? They say when he goes to the, to the beach, he will go and draw a line. He will tell them, say, look, you, 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 you nobody crosses here. <laughs> you know, and he had men. You know, if you check it, apart from uh, Benny Roha. Benny Roha. All the other players, we are giants, yeah, yes. big, we huge. We are more than six feet. Yes. So you ask them to bully anybody. His most important player was Thompson Oleha. That's true. We called him the driver. A player told me that he used to say that one leg, if Oliha was what had only one leg, that, that he would play him. Because he had enormous right. strength. That was a time there was a problem too in the team. You understand? Uh, after that, uh, uh, the Nations Cup, uh, Yekini emerged <laughs> as the highest goal scorer yeah. and got a prize, you know. Intuition? Then, yes. Somebody gave him money. Reports had it that he took that money and said it was his money. Ordinarily, he was supposed to, Before you know, to, you know yeah, share, yeah, as a, share as a, with as a the collective. But there was alleged conspiracy <laughs> against him on the pitch. <laughs> you, you, you did it all alone. Let's see how they are going to score if we don't give it. There was perceived conspiracy and sabotage. Litana! <laughs> Yeah, it, I think it was, I think it was, it yeah, was, he was compelled. Yes. It was a tough game, yes. That's why like, It was a tough game. He said, look, they needed to see somebody they had not seen. You understand? People knew that, but maybe during practice, they saw how the guy was, was sharp. And so people felt that he could disturb him. It was not quite four minutes four before minutes, he... Four minutes, he scored the goal. He equalized the, the thing. And scored the winning, and scored the winning, winning, winning goal. And Keshi troubled with a thigh injury as well. This is Nigeria fighting back on that. 
a thrust there by Amoniki, Emmanuel Amoniki, only 20 years of age. And one of the young crop of talent coming through for Nigeria. Well, I'm quite sure the Nigerian players are smarting under that blow. They didn't expect that one. Up and over, that's equaliser! The goal coming so quickly there from the man I was mentioning, Amorike. Five and a half minutes gone, Nigeria are back on level terms. A drooping head... And I've got to watch this man coming forward, Iroha. He set up and finished the move, uh, Yakini at the back. Amokachi on the far side. Aguave, Yakini, can he bet it back? Oh, just off the line and the goalkeeper is very fortunate. Well, I think you'll find Iroha here trying to come forward when he thinks it's safe enough to do so. Brilliant play by Okocha, Amaniki. I thought he was being held back there. That could be a penalty kick. Well, the referee waving play on there. Now watch this again. He was being impeded to start off with. Now, the referee was right on top of that. But quite frankly, in more cases than not, I think a referee would have given a penalty kick for that. There's no doubt there was a collision. And I think there's cause for the Nigerians to be angry about that one. I think by normal standards, the referee would have pointed to the penalty spot. That's the halftime score. It is absolutely marvellous for Zambia to have got here, given that that air crash deprived them of the real crop of uh, genuinely mature and talented players. One thing is very clear from this tournament, the African nations have learned how to defend, and sometimes it's forgotten that if the Cameroon knew how to defend well, then he wouldn't have lost that famous game they had with England. And Zambia certainly proving good organization, except they can't cut there. Zambia in the lead, a couple of goals now for Amadiki. Nigeria leading by two goals to one, and Zambia now, if not exactly throwing caution to the wind, have got to be a little more adventurous if they want to save this game. That's more like it. Played in, now where's Sayeti? Now the crowd roaring Zambia on. Every neutral in the state stadium has become a Zambian supporter. Listen to the support behind them. Squares the ball, but a cluster of white jerseys there. Yakini on his own. Look at the jerseys around him. The crowd don't like it. Yakini with it. One burst from him and he could kill it off. This is so typical Nigerian. Amakachi hovering in the middle. Let's listen to the whistling in the stadium. Now Yekini, can he knock it back? He chests the ball down, he's got his scores the woodwork. He took the words out of my mouth. Kalusha, tempting ball, just a trifle too near Peter Rufai. Zambia, who have never won this trophy, are now playing in stoppage time. 2-1 down to Nigeria. Nigeria were beaten in the final in 1984, 88 and 90, but not this one. Nigeria are the new champions of Africa. We played four matches. Is it the World Cup? Yes. At the World Cup, yeah. Uh, we won to have our... Yeah, we defeated Bulgaria in the opening game, 3-0. Three, 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 three yeah, we beat yeah. them too. No, that was in France 98, where we France defeated uh, Spain 3-2 in uh, 94. We defeated 94. Bulgaria 3-0. Uh -huh. We defeated uh, Greece. The, oh yeah, Greece. Greece. Yes, and we right. lost to Argentina. Yes. Then in the knockout, we also lost to Italy, 2 goes to 1. Less than 3 minutes to go. We were leading. We were leading two minutes to end of the yes. full time. Yeah, when Roberto Baggio equalized. equalized and took the game into extra yes, time. Mm. So it was less time that he scored the, the winning goal. There were insinuations, <laughs> you know, 
It's the nations that uh, West Ham sold out, you know, in that match, which I, I cannot substantiate anyway. The manner he left, I don't know, maybe out of fear, because he left from there. That was how he resigned from the yes, uh, virus. He didn't come back to Nigeria after yes, that. After uh, that this, so it, it kind of lent credence to the a suspicion that he actually did something. One of the players, I don't want to mention them, <laughs> said, you know, said actually blamed him. Said he didn't have to play with the set in that match. I think he was too inexperienced to play in that game against a highly uh, rated uh, one of the favorites. Itali Italian team. They, they, they got to the final, that is the Italians. Yeah, yeah. They, they lifted Nigeria and got to the finals and what well, they lost to the Brazil. It would have been greedy for anybody to expect Nigeria to win the World Cup. That was our first Yeah, first World outing. Cup. First outing. Yeah. Yeah. But I can tell you, it remains our best exactly. outing yeah. as well. T -date. T -date. You understand? So, but the thing is that the team, you know, the team has come with that aura. I mean, Nigeria had come to build enormous confidence in that team. Like we said, everybody believed that that has been the best squad. After that walk up, Nigeria was rated the fifth. That was the best, best fifth, 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 fifth ranking. Fifth, yes. we were fifth, fifth, fifth best fifth in the world. global ranking. Cameroon, Senegal have made it to the quarter final. And I think they are the best. Afri they have the best record. Yeah, the record, yeah. At the walk up from Africa. And. If, uh, okay, I think Ghana. Ghana, Ghana, Ghana. Yeah, okay, Ghana, 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 Ghana we were to, to no, yeah, quarter final also. Okay, they were to move okay, in, yes. Okay, they were yeah, to, yeah, to move into the semi yes. before uh, the same, uh, the same, yeah, the same, yeah, the same mistake. Yeah, you, know, yeah. <laughs> you know, they were very close. It would have been a pride to say we beat Italy, even if we didn't, we didn't win the World Cup. We are beating Italy, another superpower in football. That would have been a record in our first attempt at the World Cup. So, but a match we were, we were already celebrating two minutes to the end yes. of 90 minutes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Everybody was already ah, so we are beating Italy. Yes. Uh, wow. Before, everything just turned. Wow. The, the, the atmosphere so changed. The pain, the disappointment was there, but nobody could take anything away yeah. from that team. Yes. And they made an impression, you know, at the World Cup. Beating Algeria, beating Greece, it was... It was awesome. We have raw talents almost all the whole places. Are you getting me? We have players. Those who are running our football, they too are interested in what they get. So instead of, instead of getting coaches that are what their names, they just bring one Johnny man <laughs> because he has a wise skin. And then they enter into court, they, they bargain with the person. Come and tell Nigerians, we are going to give you, we are paying him $10,000 or $30,000 per month. When actually what they will give to the man may not be up to one third of that amount. That's true. The rest of the money they will uh, lie in their pockets. That has been the problem. Nigeria can afford any coach in this world. We have the money. We have the resources. We have the talents. We have the money to engage any quality coach. Once we engage a quality coach to handle the abundance, to harness the abundance of talent that we have, we can beat any. Never, never, never go down